This is Sunday the 7th of February. We are Davidson's Mains Parish Church. Welcome. We're not gathered as normal in Jesus' name. We are scattered and we're grouped and we're united across the city, across the country, across the world in Jesus' name. Jesus is Lord over all. He is with us in it all. And God is for you. Please repeat after me. Come Lord Jesus, we need you. Come Lord Jesus, we want you. Come Lord Jesus, we love you. Come Lord Jesus. So, somewhere on the screen, some superhero logos are just about to appear. And I'm going to try and act out uh, some of these superheroes. And I would like you to try to work out which one uh, from the logos uh, I am acting out. So, this is the first one. And that is... Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches thieves just like flies. Is he strong? Listen, bud, he's got radioactive blood. I'm not sure what was better there, my uh, acting or my singing. So, next one. That was meant to be Batman. Okay, third one. <laughs> uh, that is meant to be Wonder Woman and her lasso of truth. And uh, last one you'll be glad to hear. That is meant to be Superman. Uh, comic and movie superheroes tend to have amazing, amazing gadgets or magical artifacts or powers and they are so fast or so strong and go kapow or kablam and can duck and can dodge and avoid blows and bullets. Well, what about this hero? And this is what he says about himself. The spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Any idea who this is? And his logo, his symbol is very, very different because it's Jesus, Jesus of the cross. And Jesus came to rescue and save, but not with super strength or super speed. And he came to rescue and save, not with radioactive blood, like Spider-Man, but by shedding his blood on the cross. And God came not in a suit, not in disguise, he came unmasked as Jesus. And on the cross, we find a God dying to love us, dying to forgive us and dying for us to be his friend. With a love that overcomes, this hero conquers the grave. Jesus is a very different kind of hero. At the start. So hello there, um, we are doing a new song today, it's called Great Things by Phil Wickham and we've got some actions to go along with the whole song but we're just going to talk you through the actions for the chorus because that repeats multiple times. So it starts off with O Hero of Heaven, so you're going to make like a superhero, O Hero of Heaven, you've conquered the grave, you can fly around, um, you free every captive and make some chains of your hands and break every chain. 
You free every captive and break every chain. And oh God, you have done great things. Oh God, you have done great things. Then we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. We're just going to do some dancing. So we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Saviour, your name lifted high. Oh Jesus, our Saviour, your name lifted high. And then repeats, oh God, you have done great things. So God, you have done great things. She's going to go through the whole of the chorus one time. So, two, three. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Woo! So, yeah, for the action for the verse, just copy along with us. Thank you. 
from Isaiah 42. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on the earth. In his teaching the islands or the nations will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, the creator of the heavens who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand, I will keep you, and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. So let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught his friends to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning we continue our journey our Jesus journey with Luke. And last week we thought about Jesus being led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit and the story of the devil trying to undermine the God the Father, God the Son relationship. In this showdown, Jesus did what Adam and Eve did not do when confronted by the serpent, serpent's undermining lies. Jesus trusted and obeyed and followed the path set before him. And in the wilderness, Jesus did what Israel did not do in their wilderness when confronted by toil and trial. Jesus trusted and obeyed and followed the path set before him and did not put God to the test. And in doing so, Jesus shows himself to be the true Adam and the true Israel. 
And this theme continues today in Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 30, where Jesus claims not just to be the true Israel, but also the fulfillment of God's good news promises. Good news not just to be shown to a chosen few, but good news to all kinds and all sorts, people from every tribe and every tongue. Jesus' momentous claim in front of people who he had grown up with, Jesus' momentous mission declaration at the start of his public ministry is met with gladness and joy. It's not. It's met with shock and amazement, with ridicule and with rage. Is that not Joseph's son? God's love and mercy for pagan outsiders. God's grace for our enemies. And these Israelites had forgotten God's sovereign call to Israel, to his people. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and I will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. This is the next instalment of the Gospel according to Luke, and this is the Word of God. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Sovereign sovereign Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free and proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and he sat down and the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed, literally shocked at the gracious words or the words of grace that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? They replied. Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, but here in your hometown, that we have heard what you did in Capernaum. Truly, I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet, yet none of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of town, took him to the brow of a hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Jesus absolutely came to die to save us from our sin. That was the path set before him, which he gladly took, not short-cutting, short cutting the pain or the suffering. And Jesus absolutely came to conquer death. Jesus also came to live and to call us to live as he lived and to join in with his life on earth living mission. A life and mission that is led by and empowered by the Holy Spirit to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. 
And there are many ways in which God's people, you, join in with Jesus' mission. Bless you and thank you. There is a cost to living this way. And not everyone sees what is done. And there are many ways in which Davidson's Mains Parish Church joins in with Jesus' mission. And one way is the ministry of Oasis. As we shared and prayed for the ministry of the Sycamore Tree Cafe last week, we're going to share and pray for Oasis and Gail and the team. So I'm going to ask you, Gail, three questions to help in this time of sharing and praying. Question one. Gail, the first time that we ever met as part of me being interviewed for minister here, you shared with me these verses that Jesus claimed from Isaiah 61. What is it about these verses that resonates with you, that moves you? Yeah, I think um, back then that was long before we opened the Oasis. And I think it's a passage that probably appeals to, to most Christian counsellors. But for me back then, it was it was that sense of calling, that sense of anointing, that sense of this is what I want you to do in my name. And the powerful imagery that, that follows that and the, the binding up of the broken heart of the, the kind of the sense that emotional pain and grief being likened to a wound which, which needs to heal. Um, that's powerful and of course proclaiming freedom for the captives and releasing prisoners from the darkness um, counselling can be a, a slow gradual process but sometimes we, we kind of hit breakthrough and it, you get that sense of liberation for, for the person and, and it's so humbling and so such a privilege to, to be a part of yeah. Okay, question two. Gail, I know that other members of the Oasis team hold these Bible verses dear. How do these verses and, and others help guide the ministry of Oasis? Yeah, I, th I think these verses are helpful even when we're not working with people who share our faith uh, and that's probably over half of our our clients so these verses remind us in whose name and in whose strength we do what we do in terms of guiding the ministry of oasis we as, as you come into oasis we have part of psalm 23 on on the wall above as you come in you can't really miss it and that says, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Uh, and that's what we want Oasis to represent, those, those still waters, that, that safe, calm space to allow for that soul-restoring work. Also, during this lockdown, I've been very, very much moved by a particular hymn that just keeps coming back to me um, because I think it kind of sums up the way we run Oasis uh, and just how we work. And that's the hymn that starts, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. I think it's, I think it's known as the Servant Song. But I'll just read you verses two and three. We are pilgrims on a journey and companions on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. So I think that, that picture that that creates is of a side-by-side -side journey with, with gentle support. It's just beautiful. And that's what we're about, trying to create that oasis. Thank you. Question three. If we are interested in 
using or recommending or supporting Oasis, what can we do and how can we pray? I think if anyone is thinking about using or recommending Oasis, I would encourage folk to, to take that first big step of, of just getting in touch. I think that's the, the hardest bit sometimes. So either phone us or email. Um, we take confidentiality really, really seriously. I think that's important to, to underline. Um, we abide by a very strict code of ethics laid down for us by COSCA, which is Scotland's uh, professional body for counselling. If you want more information about OASIS, we have our web page on the church website, and we also have a Facebook page which has some useful material. So just look up OASIS Wellbeing Centre to find that. Um, or if you want to hand someone an Oasis leaflet, just get in touch and I can either email or post you one. Um, so that's about recommending Oasis. In terms of support, there are a few ways you can support Oasis. Um, firstly is financial. Um, we are a donations based service, but some of our clients really struggle to, to offer much financially, and we would never turn anyone away on the grounds of inability to donate. Um, so it helps us to, to balance the books if we're able to have a, an income separate to those client donations. Um, and we're grateful to the folk in the congregation who already donate monthly for this, and for those who occasionally make one-off donations. So financial is one way. Time and talents is another. So in addition to, to me, we have 10 volunteers who work with us. So five are counsellors and five are part of an admin support team. And we have room for, for more counsellors. So we'll soon be sharing on Facebook and probably in the prayer update, the advert for the Christian counselling certificate. Uh, that's the prerequisite um, to doing the full counselling diploma, which is a two-year diploma. And the diploma itself is actually now open for applications for this September start, so 2021 start. So you would finish in 2023. Um, so if anyone listening to this is at all curious about whether they are feeling called to this ministry, um, and it doesn't have to be with Oasis, just Christian counselling. Um, do feel free to just get in touch with me or with any of the Oasis team. So the second way, time and talents. And finally, prayer. And we're so grateful for the prayers that do happen for Oasis. And, and we can sense those prayers. So three things to pray for. Um, first, uh, if you could pray for the team it's not easy working via Zoom. Um, so for the counsellors, um, please pray for good connections with clients. And for the admin support team, they're all stood down just now and, and we're missing them. So just pray for them. And can we pray for clients? Um, that anyone in our community who's, who's really struggling, who might benefit from counselling, that they would hear about us and be able able to and encouraged to to take that first step of getting in touch and finally um, let's just pray for a time to come soon where we can meet face to face with clients um, because it is it's tough for everyone during lockdown but uh, I think when you're already struggling with other stuff it, it just it's just really hard so we do pray for time to, to change that we can all meet face to face and life to get a bit easier in that regard. So prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. As with all ministries, there is a cost. As Michael shared so well, the cost of uh, the cost or the giving comes in the form of time and talents and money. And your giving to Oasis makes a real difference in people's lives. 
because this ministry is wider than our parish, Edinburgh Presbytery have said that all the money given to Oasis goes to Oasis and stays with Oasis. It doesn't go uh, to the central funds. So thank God for this life-giving ministry. And thank God for your support. Thank you. God bless Gail. God bless the team. And now Derek is going to pray. Before we pray today, there's something I'd like to show you. In our Zoom time last week, we were talking about the snowdrops appearing. And in our garden, they're just beginning to peep out, as you can see. I can't think of a better image of hope than snowdrops, the first sign of life after the darkness of winter. In these difficult times, we have the hope of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, sometimes we are overwhelmed by what to pray in time of darkness, but we thank you that you know what is on our hearts and that you are there bringing hope. We thank you that there is spring after winter and that you are with us in good times and in bad. We thank you that you sent your son to preach your message and set us all free. Father, we pray for the work of our church here in Edinburgh. We pray for Gail and the Oasis team and that they will bring salt and light to all who use their services. We pray for Dan and all the church team. Fill them with your spirit, we pray, so they bring your message of hope to all. And we pray for all the churches in Edinburgh and in Scotland and throughout the world that your message of hope will reach all. We thank you that the vaccine is now rolling out and we pray for the researchers, the authorities, the health workers and for our leaders that all will be inoculated throughout the world. We pray for all those working in healthcare at this time. Fill them with your courage and strength. We pray for those who are in a place of darkness at the moment. The lonely and the isolated. Those worried about making ends meet. The families struggling with the demands of work and homeschooling. And for the students whose university time is very different this year. Draw near to them all, we pray. And finally, we pray that you will comfort those who are ill, those who are dying, and those who are bereaved. Bless them, we pray. Lord, fill us with your hope, fill us with your love, and take our hands as we walk through the darkness in your precious name. We pray. Amen. Lord, as we listen now to the Scottish paraphrase of Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, we ask that you, Holy Spirit, would come and do a Holy Spirit inworking in our hearts and a Holy Spirit outworking in our lives and in the life of our community.
with the overwhelmed, heartbroken and grieving in mind. With those stuck indoors and stuck in hospital in mind, with our loved ones, with each other, with our community in mind, with our country and with our beautiful and broken world in mind, we say together, Come, Lord Jesus. Pour out your spirit, we pray. Amen. After this service next week, we'll Zoom again. It was so good to see so many of you there. God bless.